All right, we're going to go over uh, question four from the 2004 Form B Calc A B exam. Um, so let's see. Um, the first question, what we need to do is um, find the x-coordinates of the points of inflection of the graph of f, and then we need to give a reason. Um, so the first thing you need to do is make sure that you realize um, you're given the graph of f prime, and so you should know by now that the relative extrema on the graph of f prime are going to be the points of inflection. So identify the first one. Um, jot down your reason. So f prime changes from increasing to decreasing at x equals 1. So we know that f of x will have a point of inflection there. Um, and then we know that f prime changes from decreasing to increasing at x equals 3. And therefore, f of x has uh, points of inflection at each of those values. So that would be my answer to that. Um, if you're given the graph of f prime, you want to give a reason that is somehow tied into f prime. Um, and, you know, it's not very hard. You just have to practice a little bit. So for part b, we have to do two things. Uh, one, we have to find the absolute minimum, and two, we have to find the absolute maximum. So it's, you, if you had a function in a calculator, you'd be doing the candidates test here. Um, so what we're going to do is first find the absolute minimum. Uh, you can look at the graph and just see that f prime is less than or equal to 0 for all x between negative 1 and 4. And then you can see that f prime is greater than or equal to 0 for um, all x be what? between, what? Uh, that should definitely be a 5, uh, between 4 and 5. Uh, therefore, we know for a fact that uh, f of x has its absolute minimum at x equals 4. Because um, it's the only critical point that has a sign change. Um, so let me just jot this down for you. If f prime has only one sign change, then f will have its absolute maximum or absolute minimum at that x value. It just has to happen. Um, so the next thing we need to do is figure out the um, absolute maximum. And that's going to either be at a critical point or at an end point. We've actually already considered all the critical points. Um, at x equals 0, it's point of inflection. We know that because that was part A of this question. Um, at x equals 4, we showed that it was the minimum. Um, it's a minimum. It turns out to be the absolute minimum, but that doesn't really matter here. It's just a minimum. Um, so it must be at one of the um, endpoints. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a fundamental theorem to uh, prove which of them is... Uh, bigger. So just by observation, and I, I really hate having to just use observation, but the uh, definite integral from 1 to 5 of f prime of x is definitely less than 0. Um, and you can kind of see that. Or you can definitely see it, because that area there, um, that signed area, is way bigger than that signed area, um, meaning that there's more negative than positive, so it's less than 0. All right, so a fundamental theorem tells us that the integral of f prime um, from negative 1 to 5 should be f of 5 minus f of negative 1. So we just use the fundamental theorem. And then we can rearrange this inequality to see that f of 5 is less than f of negative 1. So we knew that at one of the endpoints we had the absolute maximum, and the endpoint at negative 1 has a larger y value. Therefore, um, the absolute max must be there. Um, so then we just have to write it out. So it's when x equals negative 1, and uh, we're done with that part. Um, so the next thing is writing the equation of a tangent line. So these are like free points. Um, you do have to refer back to the problem uh, statement, though, to know that f of 2 equals 6. And if at any point in time on the AP exam you find yourself lost not knowing something, reread the question. They probably gave it to you. Um, so we know that. So g of 2 is a straight substitution, so it must be 12, right? 2 times the 6 value that we have. And then g prime requires the um, product rule. So we use that. And then we're going to have to substitute in. And uh, looking at the graph, we know that g prime, uh, or rather f prime of 2 is negative 1. And now we know everything we need, so we're just going to plug it in. And there you go. I hope you found that helpful. Good luck.